All right, today on the gun bench, I've got the CZP07. This is the Urban Gray uh, suppressor ready model. We're gonna do a complete disassembly. So we're gonna start with the magazine because it is a little bit different. Um, if you have the extended uh, base plate magazine like this, um, so you're gonna have this piece of metal coming out the back. If you basically, you might have to use a flathead or something, but I can just pull this down with my thumb. Once I do that, then I can slide the plate off. And then from there, just like a regular magazine. Just put it back together, you're gonna do the same thing, just push it down. And just get your plate and slide it on. And then from there, you should be able to push that up in there. Now it's gonna lock itself in place. From here, we'll do a field strip on the gun. So we're gonna line up our lines back here. You can use the edge of the magazine if you'd like to uh, push out this pin here. Just going to remove the slide lock, track your hammer, push the slide forward. Whoop. Remove our recoil spring and barrel. I've already taken the thread protector off. We'll set the frame off to the side while we work on the slide. So let's go ahead and remove this pin here. Um, if you're going to do this, I recommend that you replace it with one of Cajun Gunworks pins because um, these pins are notorious for breaking um, over extended amounts of uh, dry fire. So I'm going to start by driving this pin out. is out right there I'm gonna keep my finger over the back and the bottom just so the firing pin block doesn't come out and I'm gonna pull out my punch I'm gonna let the firing pin come out firing pin block Firing pin block spring, and then the firing pin spring is also in the slide. From here, we're going to need to remove the extractor. The extractor does um, have a staked pin, we can see here in the bottom. This pin here is staked, just like the uh, Shadow 2 I just did. Um, so, we're going to drive that pin out from the bottom. This is one, as I said in the Shadow 2 video, um, that shouldn't be done all the time um, because you might have to restake. But some people say that they've had you know, hundreds and hundreds of rounds through their guns and they, you know, hunt, they do cleaning every three or four hundred rounds. Um, they take the extractor out and they haven't had an issue. Nice thing about it is if you do ever have to restake it, it's on the inside. And like Beretta's that do it on the outside. So if you do have to restake, you run less risk of marring up the finish you know, on the inside, who cares? So we're gonna go ahead and knock that pin out. From the top. Now once I do that, I'm going to keep my finger over the um, extractor, pull out my punch. Remove the extractor, take out the spring, then it has a little um, a retainer, kind of a, a capturing pin to it. I don't know exactly what they call that. Um, it's some have and some don't. Um, it's just more of like a spring kind of retainer. So, um, so now your slide's completely stripped besides your sights, which I'm not going to do. Um, front sight comes out easy. You can just uh, knock it out after you remove that Allen. Um, so now we can begin with the frame. All right, so we finished up with the slide. I cut the video because I noticed that that clear uh, mat was causing too much of a glare and making it a little harder to see. So hopefully this will help. So we're going to go ahead and start just assembling the frame. And we're going to start by removing the hammer spring. So you're going to want to drive out this pin down here at the bottom of the frame. Remove 
removing the spring and plug. Now your spring probably look like this, just as a normal color. That's the 13 pound hammer spring from Cajun in that one. So now that you've removed that, it's time to remove your decocking lever or safety, whichever you have. Um, so if you look down into the frame, you're gonna notice the decocking spring and it has two legs. One's going down into the frame here and into a roll pin. And the other part, it co comes up, coils up, and then the leg see, sits, yeah, you probably won't be able to see it, but sits behind right here on the bar. So this left side decocking lever goes all the way through and connects to the right side. So you have a spring right under there. So if you look and get a pick or something, just kind of stick your pick back there. You should be able to pop that spring off there just like that. So now the spring will pop up. And I'll show you how to put it back in there. It's just, you just, you're gonna grab it with a slotted screwdriver or something and push it down. It's gonna, and over, and it's gonna end up latching behind there and I'll show you where it latches. So anyways, once you've done that, next thing to do is push down on your ejector. And once you do that, I sometimes can, it depends on the gun, sometimes you can just push down on the ejector and then just start sliding out this side. And just like that. And now once you have it that far, you can just go ahead and twist it out until it comes out all the way. Now you can remove the right side just by pushing down on the trigger bar inside the frame here. Just push down, rotate it up, and pull it out. Now that that's complete, we will remove the sear housing, sear cage. Uh, it's actually not a sear cage. It's just the uh, sear and a few other things. So what you're gonna wanna do is first, we'll remove the decocking spring just so we don't get lost. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do first is remove this spring, just pull that out. You can see the leg. You can see if you look down in the frame, right? right there it's hard to see but there's a, there's a roll pin sticking up out of the right there focus yeah anyways that's where the other leg of that spring goes so once you've done that you'll need to remove the ejector before you drive out this pin or push this pin out so what I do is the ejector here you can see it goes down and underneath that pin so what I do is I just kind of push down on it and then get a small flat head from the back and then just start and go down into the slot right here. And you can just should just be able to push it out. Just be careful. So it just goes out like that. Right. So once you've removed your ejector, you're going to have the spring that whoop, comes out with it. And it just sits down into this hole right here in the frame. So keep that. So now you can remove this pin. So just go ahead and keep your finger over everything in here. Kind of, and then just push this pin out. Gonna need a slave to get that back in there. So now I'm gonna pull out three things from there. Four, actually. There's a sear spring sitting right there. Pull that out. So the three things you removed are the double action roller, the lifter for the firing pin block and your sear itself. So you have those three items that will come out once you remove that pin, of course, and the pin. Mine are Cajun um, and this. I swapped them out earlier when I had the gun apart for when I 
first took it apart when I first got it. Got it used and it was missing the injector spring. Um, and uh, I had to order a new one. So, All right, next we can remove the hammer. So what you're gonna wanna do is lift up on the decocker or the disconnector, just like that, have it straight up in the air and then push the pin out. I'll show you why you have to lift it up. So once you do that, you can pull out the hammer strut and disconnector but if you look this hammer and disconnector go together like this so when this pin is through this disconnector is down in this yeah it's hard to get it all together but when it's down and actually sitting in there it won't let allow that pin to come out because it's in the slot on the pin, so it has to be lifted up and then you can push the pin out. Same with the disconnector, it's also a uh, occasion. So we got hammer and strut. If you wanted to remove the strut, just push this pin out. Remove your strut. Here, let's see, we got the trigger bar um, we can remove. So if you want to push out this pin here, what you're gonna wanna do is just keep your finger in there and just push that pin out. You might have to give it a whack slightly. Um, with your punch still in there, you wanna keep your finger over the return spring. You're just gonna keep your thumb in here like this so nothing can go anywhere and then just pull out the punch. From there you'll have the trigger bar, trigger, and the return spring all come out. Um, from here you can remove the trigger bar spring just like that. It just lifts out and sits in the little hole in the frame right there. Um, and now your magazine release. So what I do for the magazine release is if you look here you have this pin this headed pin that goes all the way down in between the magazine release so basically you have a small spring and a little plunger that's in there that that pin captures in the middle of so it allows pressure to be that's where your pressure is coming from that pin so what I do is get a small of these dental picks or you can use a uh, if you have a strong paper clip or something or something small enough that'll fit in there kind of behind that pin so what I do is I just push that's not the side I use. should be able to push and kind of feel the, the plunger moving so if you just push in there and then take the slotted screwdriver get under that head and just start pulling it up a little bit should now once it's up a little bit be able to grab it now keep your thumb over the hole here your finger and then just pull that pin we didn't get it all the way it's out so now you can pull that pin out just make sure you keep your finger over that hole magazine release will dump out I should take that as a blessing that it doesn't want to just fly out. But it should. There we go. See, so have the little plunger and the spring that's in there. And just so I don't lose these, I'm going to put the magazine release back in. Just put the spring first. Put the plunger in. Next, just push it down in there. And then we'll set... Um,
sitting it down in there. Uh, Why don't we do the rest? Now, that is the last thing. I mean, the, the, the frame is stripped now. The, the other two things you can remove. If you have talon grips, you'll have to cut this little angle here on both sides, like I've done, to remove this. You don't need to, though. Um, you're going to be removing, basically, uh, the rails here and here in the rear. So if you want to remove those, you just drive the pins out. And then you can get a flathead underneath. There's a little slot right in there. You should be able to stick in and just kind of lift it up out of there. Pull that out. And then you can do the same with the rear. that's not in here left at the garage. That would be enough to pull it out of there. So there's that roll pin that sticks out in the, like I was talking about earlier. So that is the completely stripped CZP07. Um, we'll go ahead and put it back together now. Starting in reverse, we're just going to go ahead and put this block back in. And I'm going to even it up too much. Here we go. Do the same with the front block. The front block's going to go down in. Slides get in, there. in and oh. you're going to be a problem, aren't you? Got to kind of push down and back with it, but for some reason. There we go. Just gonna do it with my dainty fingers. So push that through. that pin back in. Alright, so next you can put the trigger back in. Um, so what we'll do to do that is put the go ahead and put the, the spring back in. It just sits in the hole. You can just leave it laying in the middle like that. Whichever way, it doesn't matter. We'll mess with that later. And then you're going to want to put the return spring in. So I used a slave pin for this that I have somewhere. That's not it. I used this little one. I don't have the other one out here for it, I think. Yeah, I can use this one. I think this one's for the peel one, but it'll work. So what you're going to want to do is the long leg sticks out, and the short leg that's down will go down into the hole down there in the trigger. So you just push that in there, and start pushing the trigger down with your thumb. You can do this probably when it's in the gun, too. It's just a lot more of a pain. Um, and then just slide your slave pin through
there we go just make sure it's flush on both sides and then put your trigger bar on just like that and then this long leg here sits into this slot here in the frame so when you put it bound down in there don't worry about getting it underneath that spring first we'll do that in a second that spring in the frame rests in this little track right here in the bottom of the trigger guard or in the trigger bar so we're just going to put this down in there make sure that that spring is sitting on top there and then uh yeah, get our pin ready and it might take you a couple tries to get it lined up hard for me to see so I'm gonna pull it up here so I can see it side so I can actually see. Usually I paint the end of my pins white if I have to make a slave pin so I can see it through here but this one's been used so many times now it's worn the paint off so it's hard for me to see. out was the slave pin which is ideally what I wanted it to do now I can just push it through to its flush there we go so now your triggers in now the trigger bar spring like I said it's got that track in it so you want to push it down and it should just kind of pop underneath so you should just be able to push down and the trigger return itself Oop. not unless it gets caught behind the in there so there we go okay so next we will put hammer back together uh, let's go and do the mag magazine release so we've got sitting like this with the plunger sticking out I'm gonna push it through. Maybe. No, nope, I'm So I'm gonna get it like that, hold the other side with my finger, and then I'm gonna get the pin, head up, taper down. I'm gonna go ahead and push it down in there and then I can take um, I'm gonna use my small punch that might work and I'm gonna start pushing on it so I'm gonna push that push that plunger in and I'm gonna use this to make it a little easier And then I'm going to push down on this spring while I bring out the pick. So most of the time, I didn't feel like it did that time, it'll go in behind it. There we go. So always just make sure that it is seated all the way down in there. Magazine release should work. Next, we can do the hammer. So let's go ahead and put the hammer disconnector back together. Just sits on the hole there. You want to 
put it down into the frame like so. And then keep the disconnector up and then take your pin. Line up your hole. You can even see it where the hole is. is so bad I cannot see down in there to see where it's at. What's going on here? Something's hindering me from putting it on here. Might have had this too far up. There we go. Once you get it in there, you can let the disconnector fall. You don't want to get caught sometimes here on the... Okay, um, let's see. Next, what are we gonna do? So we can start putting the sear cage and stuff together. So grab four things you're gonna need. You're gonna need the sear, the roller, sear spring, five things, and the pin, um, and our slave pin. So we're gonna take the sear, like this, hook and loop facing the front, and then your lifter is gonna sit on the sear like this. Your roller is going to go head in like this. And then your slave pin will go through and keep it all together. So here's what it'll look like when it's all done. And it sits back in the gun like this. And I'm going to use this to push it through. First, we're going to put the sear spring back in, so grab it, and just set it down into the hole. Bad idea, that's magnetic. Not much here isn't anymore. Okay, so now you can grab all this. I'm gonna go back in like this. Slave pin's gonna hold it together. And you're just gonna kinda start setting it on top. Nope, messed it up. I'm trying to get my finger. Finger's gotta be in the right spot here. So I've got it pushed down in there. It's hard to see with my finger blocking it. You're gonna feel where it goes. And then you're gonna be able to start pushing this pin through. You move it enough to where you can start seeing that slave pin. down on the trigger bar a little bit. So right now 
it's this side that's blocking it from coming out, so you might have to adjust with your other hand. getting all those things lined up at the same time so the slave can come out the other side. Alright, so I'm trying to get the camera scored away here. Um, so now we've got the hammer, sear cage, all that's back in the gun. Um, we're ready to start putting the decocker levers and everything back in. So we're gonna grab everything we're gonna need. We're gonna need the decocking spring, ejector, ejector spring, safeties, decocking levers. Um, and we'll start putting those through and then we'll be home free. Um, so first thing I'll do is put the uh, the spring down in here. As like I said, the long leg just sticks down into that roll pin down in there. And you won't probably be able to see me do it because the fat hand will block the phone. But I'm just going to stick it down in there and have it facing this way in the gun. So I can stick my pin through here. So this is facing the trigger. Well, it's not like you can't flip it around if you don't get it in there right. So I'm just going to slide that down in there. It's going to sit in there just like that. Now I'm going to take my ejector spring, put it down into its hole, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the ejector in. So it's going to go in like this. I'm going to slide it, I'm going to push that spring down, and rotate it up underneath that pin we just put in. So I'm going to push down, and just kind of rotate it up behind that pin so it should sit in there like that you should have to push it down to get this other the, the decocking lever through so give it a good push and down just make sure that seats up in there where it should be it should stick out just like that so now it can be I don't know why sometimes it can be the hardest part of this is getting this peck through and butt it up with this side um, so you gotta do like three different things at once so, first thing you're going to do is grab your left side, you know, push down on the ejector, and just start putting it through, and capture, go through the middle of that spring. Let's get the spring kind of on there at least. And then what you want to do is get to your right side, it's going to go in and up like this, but push down on the trigger bar before you do this and slap it in. Snap, slide it in. And now you're going to be pushing this through while you're going to have to kind of push down and back and down on the trigger bar until you get it to butt up and go into the slot. And you're also fighting this spring here. Um, on the other side of the, the lever, so you're trying to get it all together. Almost got it there. snap it through like that. This said you might have to push down. You're going to have to push down on the trigger bar. Um, you can have the hammer back. It makes it a little easier. And um, now, normally what I like to do is while I'm doing that, push the spring underneath that lip because it makes it easier than trying to force it 
down and over to the left and you do instead of when you do that you're just forcing it down and you just slide that underneath it this one makes it a little harder on the po1 i do it the other way so now that i've done that and i've got it all put together i'm going to take the slotted screwdriver which is not easy to do with this but i'm going to be pushing it down trying to keep the screwdriver on probably have to go over to the right side a little bit while i push until it snaps underneath let's see if i can get close on there the leg you see that little leg right there where that spring goes it just it can only go one place i mean it's, you, you really can't force it if it goes back underneath there and sticks right behind a little leg right there it's where it needs to be so now everything should theoretically work so it doesn't have spring tension so. um, now we can put the hammer strut back in or hammer spring back in so we'll just slide this up in there, spring up in there, get it around the uh, strut. Then we're going to put the retainer plate plug in, which is going to go like can shaved side towards the rear. Like this. And then I'm going to be pushing this down. It's hard to do one-handed. I usually use the edge of my bench but I'll try to do it with my thumb I'm just gonna push it down until I get enough to start sliding the pin through which usually doesn't happen with my thumb because it's it goes in a little bit more flush than you can get it so I'm gonna use the edge of the bench yeah, sometimes you can just capture it with the uh, um, a punch and then do it. Makes it a little easier. And then I found if I just use the edge of my desk and just push that plunger down in there, I can get it uh, a lot easier. Now I'm just going to, for the sake of pushing it through with my, there we go. This is why I like to tap it just ever so slightly. So I can get it exactly where I want it. Okay, so function test now before you do anything else. Make sure everything works. Of course it does. Um, magazine release is good. So let's go ahead and put the slide back together. And then we will be uh, home free here. So we're going to do... Grab this bowl. Um, ejector. Ejector spring and plug. Staked ejector pin. And we'll do the... Uh, do the ejector and everything first. Extractor. I don't know why I kept saying ejector. Um, so like I said before, this is a staked pin, so it's going to come back through from the bottom. We're going to put our ejector spring plunger in. So when it sticks through, it's going to be sticking through like this. It's kind of an... It's, a good centering which is be exactly what it's for probably um, to help center the extractor so when you're putting it back in you know you should be exactly where you need to be so now I'm gonna what I do is I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna take this super small punch and go from the top just to oh. uh, yeah that's a lot looser um, let's see Nope, that's my smallest punch. It's just too loose to do what I wanted to do with it. Oh, um, I can still use it. So what we'll do now 
just going to use this one to keep it there for now. I just grab that pin. You can usually see which way it was staked. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I like to use the same end so it's all uniform. So I'm going to start pulling that out. And then I'm just going to push that extractor. It's pretty easy. So you should just be able to push this. Get it started in there. I'm only hitting the pin with the brass hammer. Once I get it to where I can let go of the extractor and it doesn't pop out like that, I know I've, I've captured it enough to uh, start letting it go back. Uh, it doesn't help as much. Yeah, come on. It's a stupid block. We don't want to keep it in place. So I'll get it flush. It's tight going in, so I know it doesn't need to be staked. Um, it's exactly where I want it to be. That's how you put your extractor back in. So now we'll put the firing pin, the firing pin block in, and we'll uh, let you guys go. We've got that crappy roll pin. I'm going to replace that next week. I'll probably do the Pro Grade. I think it's called the Pro Grade Upgrade Kit for the PO7 from Cajun. Um, I'll probably order that here next week and uh, try to get that in, make a video on it like I did with the PO1, which is, if you've seen this, you can probably do it, but we'll add a few things. We'll polish it. Um, show you a cool little tool I bought for polishing and grinding at the bench. But Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and put the firing pin spring in first um, and then I'm going to take the firing pin block and I'm going to put it down in like this with cutouts facing the inner of the firing pin channel I'm going to put it in there and a lot of times you just got to take a punch and just kind of get it close to the side and then I'm going to take the firing pin cuts up and I'm going to slide it through there Now I'm going to push it in flush, and I should be able to let go of the firing pin block on these and uh, let it go. So now if I look through the hole, I can see where the little bit would stop my pin from going through. If I push all the way in, it'll go all the way. So um, this is where I'll stick this punch in just to kind of capture it. You know how I like to capture everything. It makes it a lot easier. And then I'll get my pin ready back out my punch just a little bit now it's always best if you are going to put this roll pin back in just to keep it with the cutout where the end of the end of the roll meets it's always best to put it up so we'll get it in there to where the firing pin won't ex uh, fly out and now we can go ahead and use this punch to put it all the way home you can see equal this won't be a protrusion it actually recesses in there a little bit so I just like to see it even on both sides it looks pretty good there here we'll put our barrel and recoil spring back in. And sorry for the few cuts in the video. I did the slide last night and then uh, I realized how bad the frame video was when I looked at the went to upload it so I cut that part out and redid the frame. Uh, what are we looking for here? There it is. So now let's go ahead and function test everything, put it back together slide on, get your lines lined up.
crappy trigger. It's not a bad trigger. I'm just kind of a trigger snob, so single action's kind of weak. Very long take up, but I mean, it's decent. It's definitely shootable. Um, it's a very good defensive gun. Um, a lot of people don't like swapping out parts in their defensive guns. So once again, um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see the pro grade upgrade kit, let me know. Um, like I said, I pay for everything by myself, so if I'm going to spend two hundred and thirty dollars to put it into a gun, that I will more than likely trade off for something else. Um, I want to know that people actually want to see that video, so let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if you what uh, guns you'd like to see disassembled. I'll try my best to get them. I said. Um, I, I fund all this myself, so I'm doing trading and buying as much as I can to try to get newer guns and different guns um, to do disassemblies and reviews on things like that. Uh, we're getting close to a thousand subscribers, um, and I'll probably do some kind of giveaway at that point. If people don't know, at a thousand subscribers, when you can start getting YouTube monetization as long as you have 4,000 watch hours, which I do, I, I blew that out of the water a while ago. Um, I don't really want to do YouTube monetization because they're so anti-gun and they don't they're not going to pay anything anyways so um and we're really going to try to stay away from that so if i can get support from you know maybe other uh, companies and stuff like that that want to send uh, parts and stuff for installation that'd be that'd be awesome so we'll see you next time on the gun bench hope everybody enjoyed uh, get out there and shoot we'll see you next time